Hey, this is Rob from Slashcam. Welcome to our first-hand shooting experience with the Sony FX2 and our technical review. In this video, we will be comparing the dynamic range of the FX2 to the Panasonic S12. We will talk about our handling experience and ergonomics with a special focus on the new viewfinder. We will have a look at the skin tone reproduction of S-Log3 within Resolve color grading workflows. We will have a look at the autofocus performance and AF override options, the stabilization performance of the active modes, as well as the heat management and battery run times. And if you prefer to analyze our Sony FX2 material without me talking the whole time, you'll find as well a clip on that on our YouTube channel. When you pick up the Sony FX2 for the first time, you might think you're holding a mixture of the FX3 and the Alpha 7C2 in your hand. Because the body is basically reminiscent of the FX3, but with the viewfinder unit roughly in the same position as on the Alpha 7C. The electronic viewfinder of the Sony FX2 offers significantly more features though than that of the Alpha 7C. With 3.68 million dots, it delivers a higher resolution and through its hinge design it allows for a 90 degrees tilt. Additionally, it features a larger rubberized eye cup and promises the same sturdiness as the FX2 body which includes elements made from magnesium alloy. Overall, the build quality and robustness align with the standards of the FX3, placing it firmly within Sony's cinema line category. In our opinion, the EVF is a significant advantage of the Sony FX2 over the FX30 and FX3. Compared to the flip-out screen, focusing through the viewfinder, especially with manual focus, is significantly more accurate, even without peaking enabled. In our test shots, we manually focused without any problem between the spokes of the wheel and Janina's eyes, a manual focus pull that we found a lot harder to accomplish when only looking at the flip-out screen. With peaking turned on, the flip-out screen becomes more usable, but for long shoots it's just not as comfortable or reliable as the viewfinder. But granted, that might be as well personal taste. Looking at the rear of the camera, the new mode dial stands out, enabling a seamless and quick switch between movie and stills mode. Equipped with a 33 megapixel CMOS sensor based on the Sony Alpha 7 IV, the FX2 is a lot more hybrid than the FX3 or the FX30. The integrated mechanical shutter is a strong proof of this hybrid layout, allowing shutter speeds of up to 1 4000th of a second, electronic shutter of up to 1 8000th of a second. This inclusion means the FX2 really is quite a powerful stills camera as well. Now let's have a look at skin tones. We shot exclusively in Cine EI S Log 3 with the Sony FX2, the same Cine mode that's central to Sony's cinema lineup. If you're already familiar with Cine EI, you'll feel right at home with the FX2. Using Sony's official Rec. 709 LUT already yielded good skin tones. We like using here the Sony Low Contrast 709 LUT. It offers a neutral base that works quite well across a variety of lighting conditions. But even with a simple manual color correction, the S-Log3 material from the FX2 is very forgiving and lets you achieve great results quickly. It really shows how far Sony has come with its internal color signs. The same goes, by the way, for Sony's creative looks and picture profiles, especially as Cinetone, which has become a favorite for many Sony shooters. It's a great option if you want softer highlights than Rec. 709. But don't overlook the simpler creative looks either. Originally designed for stills, they can actually be very effective for fast turnaround projects. The standard creative look, for instance, offers a great balance of contrast, saturation and skin tone rendition. Now let's move on to the new Big 6 menu option. With the FX2, Sony has introduced a new so-called Big 6 status menu, showing six key settings. Frame rate, ISO, shutter angle, aperture, look and white balance. All on one quick access screen. This concept originally came from ARRI and has become very popular since. Sony bringing it to the FX2 marks its debut in their entry-level cinema line. 
With one tap on the rear home button, you can bring up the Big Six menu, even while recording. Each setting can be selected via touch, and doing so assigns all control dials, front, rear and multi-selector, to that setting. Super handy for quick adjustments, especially on a tripod. Next up is image stabilization. The Sony FX2 offers three stabilization modes, standard, active and dynamic active. Here we compare the maximum stabilization mode, dynamic active, with stabilization disabled. The dynamic active mode crops a bit further into the sensor than the other modes, but comes closer to gimbal-like results. Thanks to the FX2's 33 megapixel sensor, you retain pretty good resolution even with a heavier crop. On top of that, the FX2 also supports gyro metadata recording, allowing you to apply post-stabilization and catalyst browse, giving you precise control over the crop and stabilization level. A downside of the higher res sensor of the FX2 though is that in general rolling shutter is more noticeable than on faster readout sensors like the FX3 or A7S3. Next up is autofocus performance and here is a good example of what makes the Sony AF system one of the best on the market. If the tracked subject briefly leaves the frame and comes back, the camera fluently reattaches focus. This memory AF feature is still unique to Sony. While we still value manual focus pretty high for best focus control, especially when paired with the FX2's viewfinder, a reliable AF system like this is pretty good for gimbal shots, solo interviews, etc. We also tested fast motion where Janina was running toward the camera at an aperture of f2.8 and frame by frame playback revealed a pretty high percentage of correctly focused stills. Tracking also works reliably at 100 fps, although this high frame rate recording is only in HD resolution available on the FX2. So here comes our battery runtime test. The FX2 also uses the proven NPFZ100 battery, a standard across most of Sony's mirrorless cameras. We were quite curious about battery life since the FX2 has some potentially power-hungry components. An integrated fan, the high-res 33 megapixel sensor, built-in stabilization and, of course, the built-in EVF. In a one hour shoot with Janina, we only used around 20% battery in mixed on off use, a great result. In our non stop recording test with 10 bit 4K 25p, AF on, flip screen active, the FX2 ran for two hours and one minute before shutting off, which is very efficient given its features. And in that period, we didn't experience any heat warnings. Sony says it can record up to 13 hours continuously thanks to the internal fan, making it a great choice for long-form event coverage. And here comes our dynamic range comparison with the Panasonic S12. We included here the brand new Panasonic S12 for several reasons. First, as a full-frame hybrid with a focus on video, it falls into a similar price range as the Sony FX2. Second, the S12 also offers two different filming modes, one with extended dynamic range up to 30p at approximately 29 milliseconds of rolling shutter and one without extended dynamic range up to 60p. Since the Sony also ultimately requires the user to decide whether to shoot in full frame up to 30p or in Super 35 up to 60p, it made sense to compare both cameras in their respective two modes. In fact, the dynamic range varies visibly between the different modes. As expected, the dynamic range is lowest in the S35 crop mode of the FX2. It's also interesting to note that the S12 without extended dynamic range lags slightly behind the FX2 in full frame mode. However, the FX2 is in turn outperformed by Panasonic's activated dynamic range extension. Also nice to observe, the two clips on the right achieved their increased dynamic range at the cost of rolling shutter times of 26 to 29 milliseconds, while the two clips on the left fall within the range of 12 to 14 milliseconds. Which brings us to our conclusion. With the FX2, Sony has introduced the most versatile camera in its FX Cine lineup to date. No other FX camera combines this level of cinema capability with high-end photo features. 
Effectively, the FX2 is both a mobile entry-level Cinecam and a Sony a7 IV wrapped in a professional Cine-style body. The new EVF with its ergonomic tilting design, cutting-edge autofocus performance, strong battery performance, optional XLR top handle, long recording times and the helpful Big 6 menu all add value. But there are as well some trade-offs. 10-bit 4K 5060p is only available in Super 35 crop and the rolling shutter is substantially higher than on the FX3 or A7S3. Still, the FX2 is a very compelling gateway into Sony's Pro Cine ecosystem, especially for those who can also make use of its still capabilities and for all that appreciate working with a viewfinder like we do.